evening. My name is Bob Liff, and this is the CUNY Forum, a monthly town meeting that brings prominent New Yorkers together with faculty and students of the Edward T. Rogowski Internship Program in Government and Public Affairs. When it comes to the proposal for a state constitutional convention, which will be on the ballot in November's election, the choice is clear. Voting for a constitutional convention will give voters a chance to set in motion a once-in-20-year opportunity to overhaul Albany's appalling and periodically corrupt culture that makes us a poster child for dysfunctional government and crony-led decision-making. But voting against the constitutional convention is the only way to protect New York State's progressive traditions from institutional forces that are plotting to seize control of this murky and misunderstood process and leave us far worse off than we now are. As someone who has looked closely at this question, I can tell you without hesitation, I agree with both sides. <laughs> it appears to be a contest between hopes and fears. Hopes for a better government and fears the process will be hijacked by some of the same forces that profit and thrive from the current dysfunction. At stake potentially is the future of, among other items, union and pension rights, home rule, powers, environmental protections, public schools, funding, public schools funding, ethics reform, rationalizing our judiciary, bail reform, civil liberties, and New York's cumbersome voting procedures, as well as shaking up or even replacing a legislative structure that has shown little propensity to reform itself. Depending on whom you talk to, things could get better or they could get a lot worse. The process itself involves a vote, this, a vote this November on whether to authorize a constitutional convention, which, if approved, would be followed by a subsequent election next November of delegates based on state Senate districts plus 15 elected statewide. Those delegates would then meet and consider whether to amend or our existing 1938 constitution or simply scrap it and start from scratch with whatever proposal they come up with going back to voters for an up or down vote in 2019. We won't have the luxury of waffling when it comes to the November ballot, so we have brought together four New Yorkers who have figured out where they stand, and hopefully they will give us, and especially me, clarity on why they are right. Bill Samuels is the head of Effective New York, a group campaigning in favor of the Constitutional Convention. Henry Garrido is the executive director of District Council 37, the Municipal Workers Union, which is urging its members to vote no. Bertha Lewis is the head of the Black Institute, who, who uh, supports the Constitutional Convention, and we're waiting for Donna Lieberman, who will join us. She's stuck in the subway somewhere. She's the head of the New York Civil Liberties Union. Um, Bill, you're the head of Effective New York. Give me 90 seconds on why we should say yes and why now. We haven't had a Constitutional Convention for 50 years. We haven't, that one was voted down by the voters. We haven't amended the Constitution through the convention process for 80 years. Well, first, I normally start with Hello, boys and girls. And it has nothing to do with your age uh, when I'm on my radio show. It's to make me feel young. And I want to point out the youngest member here. I, I don't know if you see him. He's back there, Mitch Drayson. He's 14. Raise your hand, Mitch. Um, <laughs> let me tell you why I'm for a constitutional convention. I believe we have the best city council in my history. You meet the number of really young, like Richie Torres and Ben Kalos, I get enthused. But we have term limits, we have campaign finance, six to one matching funds. When you go to Albany, I'm ashamed. I'm ashamed. It's not just the corruption, it's the quality of our candidates. Good young people run for office in the city. They don't want to go up to Albany and we can list all of the things that are wrong. In my mind, having spent 10 years trying to elect a Democratic state senate, it was either to elect a more progressive governor than Governor Cuomo, I'm not a supporter, and knowing how difficult that will be next year, I am for giving the power to the people, taking it from the governor and uh, the state legislature. I also believe every convention in our history has been good. There's never been a negative one. All the union rights that I support, I'm pro-union, were passed in a 38 convention. The environmental uh, protections of Forever Wild were passed in the 1894 convention. Let's not be afraid. When a bully comes after you, you don't run, put your head in the sand, you attack. I believe that the delegates elected, will, both Republicans and Democrats, will have an incredible, work together well, out of that convention will come major changes, maybe not everything that we all want, 
that will make us proud of Albany. And maybe some of you will want to go into public service and say, you know what, I'd like to be an assembly person or a state uh, senator, and it's worth a commitment of my life. So I say dare to change, and I'm 100% confident that if we the vote passes, this is going to be the most exciting thing in recent history, and that labor and we will work together if it passes, and we'll work together also if it doesn't pass. Henry, um, in particular, the, the, both the 1894 convention and the 1938 uh, enshrined things like the right for, to collective bargaining for public employees. You can't reduce pensions once you, know, once you enter a pen, whatever the pension tier is. You know, they're not only, so there were a lot of union rights that, as I understand, a lot of the opposition, particular from public employee unions, um, are very concerned about, about what you could lose and who could hijack this process, yeah. even though your interest is beyond just union issues. Yeah, well, first of all, thank you for the opportunity to be here. Um, I want the record straight that I am not afraid. <laughs> I want to set the record straight that we're not afraid. Uh, what we are is convinced that this system uh, of the Constitutional Convention would be totally rigged. And there's a fundamental difference between the previous conventions that gave the, right, the rights to those workers and today. The influence of money, especially in the wake of Citizens United, that has given corporation complete carte blanche into funding individual campaigns has totally changed the game. Now, how do we ensure that this would be a real people's constitution and convention with what we've seen in the politics, money has bought out politics in New York. And I think this is where we fundamentally disagree. There are too many uh, important issues at stake given the current climate. Yes, there is a concern about what happens to public pensions. Uh, there, there's a lot of other concerns about collective bargaining for labor. But, you know, we, we talked about the environment and the forever wild clauses that are there. Uh, we talked about uh, w what's in the Constitution right now, where I know that there are a lot of people who like to change. Some of, New York has a very unique set of roles when it comes to protecting people who uh, have a right to social services. That's in the Constitution. And for us to expect that the very same people who have taken Albany where they are today are going to be the police that are going to change the rules, I think that's a ridiculous proposition. Uh, and to the point about giving access to the everyday Joe that was going to be running us as a candidate, I think that's utterly ridiculous right now as it is. If you don't have access to literally thousands and thousands of dollars to become a candidate yourself, there's no way you're going to be elected as a, as a delegate. So this illusion that somehow we're giving the power to the people uh, is, is just that. It's an illusion. And it's become this panacea where everything that everybody wants to change can be achieved through a constitutional convention. You want criminal justice <coughs> reform? We can do that through a constitutional convention. You want housing and, and home rules change? We can do that through a constitutional convention. I'm about to think that if we want to cure cancer, we should have it as an amendment to the constitutional convention. We are not afraid. We're just convinced the system is not properly set up and it will be rigged in the process. Bertha, you and I have been, you know, knocking heads in politics for more years than we care to admit. Um, uh, this is a particularly strange time in, in American politics uh, where you have kind of forces on the right that are very organized. Mm -hmm. um, and you, you're confident that this, would, that, that this would not be hijacked by the, by the kind of people Henry you're talking about? Here's why I'm confident. Because I'm ready to fight. Well, the other people are ready life, to fight, too. Well, you know what? Already, we have folks running Albany with the big money interest. And here's the thing. In this time, in this place, with this president and this Congress, my aim and my commitment is to make this a deep, deep, deep blue state. There are things in our Constitution right now that need to be protected. We need to shore up any holes, any tears that they are. And New York State needs to be the leader on this. People say I'm part of the resistance and I'm gonna do this. Well, that's fine. So am I. But the deal is this. There are 
tools, there are things that you can do on a practical level to ensure that New York is not eroded. I have been working on taking the Senate for 15 years. And you know what? My Democratic friends messed it up every time. Okay, I was just involved in a voter suppression case. All right, still us. In the Constitution, it says that you cannot be disenfranchised. And yet, time after time after time, in my neighborhoods, in black and brown neighborhoods, for minorities and women, time after time, it's like the Constitution doesn't mean anything. People say, oh, well, just leave it the way that it is. It's okay. Well, it's not okay for me. Some people will be all right, no matter what. But my people will not be all right. And I'm not going to lose this chance for, for another 20 years to fight for the kinds of changes that I think we can. Yes, it's not a panacea, but there used to be a time when progressives and labor and other groups stood shoulder to shoulder and used what they could to fight. And now there seems to be a time where, oh, you know, the right is so organized. I'm an organizer. We know how to organize. Money, we know how to raise money. This last presidential elections, tens of millions of dollars. So please, don't talk to me about money. Don't talk to me about they're going to organize us. Because in my lifetime, what I've known is people told me you can't fight in the civil rights movement, that you can't, that blacks couldn't get in to the unions. Time and time again, that's what folks say. Beware, slow down, don't do it. It's my life, and it's a life and death. And that's why I am going to be a delegate if this passes, and I'm going to work my butt off, and I'm going to fight like hell. I will not, I will not stand down. We're joined by Donna. She made it after the vagaries of the subway system. And um, we could fix the subways, too. If you, if you <laughs> promise me that, I'll stand <laughs> okay? Um, I, um, After we do cancer. Yes. <laughs> yes. What's interesting is that you have divisions on the left, divisions on the right. This, this, you know, who supports <laughs> and who opposes this issue doesn't break down on ideological lines, right. on party lines. <laughs> the, the, the conservative party is against this. One of the issues that came up on a recent session that I was that I attended was a lot of the legal protections that are in the Constitution now under Article 17 under. Um, mm -hmm. Um, um, a lot of the, uh, you know, a lot of the desire to kind of do criminal justice reform. Uh, why are you concerned about this process? Well, you know, there's a way to amend the Constitution without a constitutional convention. You know, it comes from two sessions of the legislature and ratified by the by a popular vote. But but so so there is a way. Our Constitution is not unamendable except if we have this constitutional convention. Um, and what this constitution, what a call for the constitutional convention would do, would put our entire constitution on the block, up for grabs, subject to if horse trading happens in Albany, I don't know why it wouldn't happen in wherever the constitutional convention would happen, subject to horse trading. So, so I don't like that because I don't really feel comfortable putting my First Amendment protections, which in New York are broader than under the U.S. Constitution, up for grabs. I don't feel comfortable putting our constitutional guarantee of aid and care to the needy up for grabs. You know, I don't feel comfortable putting our ability to protect the environment up for grabs. And up for grabs in what context? You know, our Constitution provides a mechanism for choosing delegates to the state constitutional convention. And to borrow a term from somebody whose name is 45, the system is kind of rigged, you know? And why is it rigged? It's not rigged because the Constitution rigged it. It's rigged because it's been perverted over the years. What I mean is constitutional delegates are chosen based on state Senate districts. 
that wouldn't be bad in the abstract, but in reality it's pretty bad because our state Senate districts have been politically gerrymandered in order to keep the incumbents in power. Okay, and so that doesn't provide for you and me to have equal votes if we thought that it voted, the public should be voting on the whole shebang. No, it's rigged, it's lopsided. Some people, the people who control the Senate, have their thumb on the scale. So if I'm gonna, so I'm reluctant to put all our fundamental rights up for grabs to begin with, but why would I put them up for grabs in a system that is weighted against <clears throat> fairness, weighted against an equal vote for everybody? And when you have state senate districts as the basis for choosing delegates, right, they have been politically gerrymandered, and there's no guarantee that there's going to be anything but at large three votes per three delegates chosen in each district by everybody in the district, right? It weighs against minority people who have been uh, historically disenfranchised and suffer when you have at-large voting. So, 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 look, I have so many dreams to change the, the, the New York State Constitution, to strengthen it, to benefit people, to protect our privacy, to better protect our, our right to, our access to justice, to better protect the right to education. I could go on and on and on. But this isn't going to do it. This just isn't going to do it. We have to get rid of political gerrymandering for starters before we can even think about a constitutional convention. You know, it's um, and and uh, jump in. But um, what I'm going to kind of throw this out and let you guys fight, and I'm going to duck. Um, <laughs> um, why would you think, absent the constitutional convention? That the same people in Albany who are the, who are profiting from the dysfunction would allow the kinds of campaign finance reform, the kinds of independent redistricting. Why do you think they would embrace, accept, push the, those kinds of issues? Without the convention. why would without you a think? convention? You just said, Donna, there's ways to do this. Yes. All right, Donna, let's do it. So what are the ways? The same way that we have with a dysfunctional uh, Senate and Assembly and, I might add, governor, you're saying, well, let's put it in their hands and let's use that. Here's what I'm saying. I am saying it's not a zero-sum game where it's an either-or. If there's a way to do stuff, which has not been done, by the way, since it's been available, then you don't count out another methodology. So you do them both. And he's right. If we think that closing our eyes is, is going to make us invisible, we're wrong. If we think that there are folks right now who aren't plotting right now to diminish, erode, and tear away little by little by little at what protections we already have, and we do nothing that somehow or another they're not gonna they're not gonna get organized, they're not gonna rile up, they're not gonna do anything. So my question is, with all of the things that we want to do over the past 20 years, over the past 20 years, with the ability that you say we had to do it, why haven't we been Done. able whoa, to whoa, do whoa. it? The, the fact that we haven't been able to do it thus far doesn't mean that the buying in to a flawed system, a, a, a system that is weighted against us by virtue of how you pick the delegates, is going to be any better. I mean, we have a, there's a case before the United States Supreme Court and the NYCLU wrote an amicus brief in it to, like, to, to, to put a lid on this political gerrymandering. You know, I think that's, you know, we're not going to get our Constitution fixed. We're not going to get rid of horse trading and corruption in Albany by simply by, by hoping that the Constitutional Convention will do it for us. It is set up against, to undermine our rights. The, 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 the delegate selection does not favor people of color. It does not favor uh, democracy. It favors the incumbents in the Senate who have 
put a stranglehold on anything progressive going through the legislature. So, like, I think we're going from bad to worse by going the Constitutional yeah. Convention route. We have fought for, 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 for voting reform, for electoral reform for years, and we have to continue to do it. But a con-con is not a quick fix for it. It just isn't. Let me make a comment. Uh, I couldn't uh, disagree more. We've never had a constitutional convention where all parties didn't work well together. If you look at the financial filings now, there is no dark money seen anywhere trying to get this passed. None. Uh, the money, which isn't major, for the positive people, there isn't a lot. Uh, even for the no, some of the labor unions that I respect, like NYSED, have put up some money. There's no indication. The money really is in Albany. But second of all, uh, there are 15 delegates at large, okay? In 1967, we had a Republican-controlled governor, and yet Democrats won the election. We had incredible people from Scotty Campbell to uh, Mayor Wagner to Bill Vanden Heuvel as delegates. One of the amendments in 67 was political gerrymandering should be illegal, okay? Because we batched it, it didn't pass. So. Donna's do you fear, you gonna, you, uh, could sorry. you let me finish? Yeah, sorry. Okay. No, but I think it's important. There is no history of dark money in our conventions. There's none that we've seen here. Only money we see here goes to the housekeeping accounts in Albany. We will elect, and there is more resistance and energy now, I'm old, I was around in 67, uh, of people that want change than in 67. So I don't have, not only don't I have any fear, I think Republicans, Brian Kolb is for it. He is the assembly member, he's fantastic. Let's not make Republicans, and I'm a, a Democrat, the enemy. We have a lot of good Republicans. The right wing, there's not a prayer they're gonna control this. And we gotta remember, if it happened, which is zero percent in my mind, the voters can reject it. We have a huge Democratic majority. There's no chance pensions will be taken away anyway. It's protected by the Constitution. So my hope is that this passes, this passes, and that Donna and Henry and all of us, if it passes, unite to pass certain things. But this fear thing, I don't buy. Good. If the people know the truth and go through behind the wall of the kind of rhetoric that we're hearing, it will not pass. First of all, Let's look at what, we be, what we're hearing here. How much has the world changed since 1967? A lot. Right? Let's talk about technology. Let's talk about fake news. Let's talk about manipulation of the facts by a group who it is funded by dark money. Sir, I urge yeah, you to look true. at accounts. And I can go specifically on some of it. But, but let's, look at, let's look at the prospect of the people really getting elected on this process. I don't know about you. I don't know the people in this audience. But it is estimated that if you're going to run as a delegate, you have to raise between two dollars and $250,000. Now, you may disagree with that. Uh, you may say it's more or less, may say it's less. But the fact is, that is the average amount that a in a Senate district somebody has been able to run as a bare minimum. I don't know the people in this room, and I don't know the people in my family who could say, hey, I'm a citizen, I'm a free-thinking person, I want to run, let me take the $250,000 I have in this account so that I can run with the prospect that I may be elected to be a one-time delegate. I think this system favors those who are already in politics, who have raised money, who have bank accounts, who have a list of donors who already will be able to be benefited by having one of their own in there to control that process. And, 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 and I think that we ought to have a discussion about how do we prevent that from happening. And, and let, let me just take another uh, myth that was mentioned here before. There has been more constitutional amendments in New York State without a constitutional amendment, uh, a okay. convention, than there has been with one. There's been over 200 constitutional amendments to the Constitution. That's why our by the process that was is huge. Yeah, right, right. but that was by the Reading process we described it there. Right. Right. So the things that you're talking about at a time where we had this movement 
where labor laws were changing, where states, the whole liberalism was taking place at the time in 1970s and the 1800s. It's a whole new world out there. We have politics that is absolutely controlled by money. We saw that at the presidential election. We saw that even when the will of the people wants to rule, in many instances, that doesn't happen. Wisconsin, those... A every place else. So let's just say that this system, I am not confident that the system has right now enough protection to prevent the kind of control of that dark money that you mentioned in the delegate selection process. And I just think it would be a very bad use of our money. Now, the last time we spent almost uh, uh, in the last convention um, uh, an amount that would be equivalent to about a half a million dollars right now. Now, at a time we're talking about the challenge. What? Half yeah, a what? Don't, don't, don't yeah, no, it's, fake facts. Wait, no, wait. it's not fake facts. Look, well, no, we didn't you hear your number. Half a billion dollars, oh, right? Billion. It's five hundred million dollars between yeah. what you would pay the delegates running the convention, running. It, it, you could, you. It's a fact. You can look at it. No, it's it's not, not a fact. Uh, okay. No, we can isn't. dispute on numbers, but yes. I would be glad to dispute on the numbers because if there's one thing that I know is numbers. But in this case, let's just say that it's less. Let's concede that it's less. We have a process that is rigged to begin with where people are being sold a bill of goods and say, you can change anything you want. But we're going to put in charge the very same people who have been rigging the system to begin with to change what you want. That is a process that does not end in a good outcome. And but that's the reason why we're not afraid. We're no, protecting. Yes, you are what, afraid because not. you're already saying to everyone here and you're saying to, to, to everyone who will listen to you, the system is rigged. There's nothing you can do. They're going to outspend us. That's it. Let's plot along. Nothing can change Albany. We can't fight it. There's nothing we can do. There's, there's no way, yes you are, because I'm, I'm living in the same reality that you are. Uh, and here's what I know. I know that there is a mechanism and there's a way for us to promote democracy and we're saying, no, we don't want to do that. What do you think is going to happen if, there, if you lose this opportunity for the next 20 years? And here's the other thing. For me, you want to talk about money? I'm a person of color, and I'm a woman. And let me tell you who the less money gets spent on is somebody like me. Well, I'm sick of it, and I'm going to fight back to it. When you know better, you do better. We do know about technology. We're not like some idiots with sticks and everyone else has the best technology. We do know about fake news. We do know how to organize. We know how to do these things. The other side, or whoever we think is the boogeyman, doesn't have an exclusive right on that. So my thing is this. Let's just say, November 8th, we wake up and the vote is yes, there will be a constitutional convention. What will you do? I what would, will you do? Well, first I will now, get some Advil for the <laughs> <laughs> Okay, that, that's how fine. How that go for you but in the last election? Except Here's what <laughs> I will do. Because if the... Except uh, that you would organize at that point. The without a doubt. And you are behind. Without a doubt. And the right? whole thing is, we organize now to ferret out, and I'm not talking about someone who is living from paycheck to paycheck, but I do think that I would certainly like to see, and I know that you would support, putting up members of your organization, and you would too, to help them to be delegates. I intend, if the vote is yes, to work my ass off to be a delegate because we weren't there before. I had a bunch of white men telling me how I was gonna live my life from 1894 through 1938 and even into 1967. You're damn right. I'm about protecting people of color and folks who haven't had a chance. And I, I just get a little bit concerned that we're not willing 
to use a tool given to us, especially under this current administration, to use it as a tool of resistance, but to say, the status quo is the way that it is, and we'll just chip around the edges. Of Let me agree hand. with uh, Henry and Donna on a point. The fear is real. Uh, it's undeniable. Uh, and it's not irrational. I think your points about how things have changed, they have changed. I have probably a majority of my friends uh, that are really fearful. So I respect the argument because it's a fact, okay? But here's why I don't think it's going to happen. Uh, this, this is a democratic state, number one. The final vote is the people's, okay? Two, the boogeyman is not the Republicans. We have a lot of Republican support on things like term limits, campaign finance reform, fundamental changes in Albany. The real resistance is Albany, and we have not been able to change it. And if you look at gerrymandering, which clearly is the national issue, and we are totally gerrymandered in New York. It is a disadvantage. It's und undisputable. But here's what Albany did. In 2014, I don't know if any of you voted in 2014, Albany put forward a gerrymandering amendment that was supposed to be historic, according to Andrew Cuomo. Let me tell you what it did. <coughs> Let's say all of us are truly the committee and we come up with perfect districts. You give it to the legislature. If one of them says no, it goes back to the committee. They do it again. They said second no, it just goes back to the old way. It was not a change. Worse than that, what Cuomo and the legislature did to determine the number of Senate seats, they said, you know what, let's eliminate Queens, literally, and merged it with NASA into a full county. Let's eliminate the Bronx. They cut it in half, put some in West Ch I mean, this is a, not a joke. Some of them in Manhattan. And most importantly, they said, if you live in Suffolk County, we're going to merge it with um, Staten Island. And they came up, Cuomo and the whole gang, with the formula that created an extra Senate district. Albany isn't working. And it is a Carmen DeSapio Tammany Hall. So that's a fact. Now the question becomes, can we trust the delegates? and the delegate selection. It's clearly not perfect. The fear is absolutely real, okay? I just, having been the finance chair for the state senate the year we won, being deeply involved in the state senate districts, and this is just a judgment call, I believe we will have incredible delegates. Yes, a lot of them will be existing politicians, but only 7% seven, only 7 of the delegates in 97 were sitting legislatures. 20, 15, 67. 67. 67. 67. Yeah, I'm old, older <laughs> right. than old. And really yes, sad. judges were delegates, and they were 15%. Well, I want judges as delegates. So I'm not worried about the system being rigged. We will have a very good mix of Democrats and Republicans. They will work well together. There's nothing in our history of our state that's been divisive of these conventions. Everyone's taken the high road. And as far as I'm concerned, uh, there isn't a lot of risk. It's an opportunity. And, but I understand the fear and I respect it. And I got to tell you, there's, it's, it's strong across the board. But no one's risk. making up the fear. But it is risk and it is fear. And for me, I'm just, you know, and I'm just going to speak for myself. You know, when I have fear, I fight. I am not going to retreat. I am not going to lose this opportunity. I fight. And I try to organize other people to fight. Because I know if the vote is no, if people come out November and say, eh, we don't want a convention, I know the fight continues. It is not easy. It is going to take work. I mean, dirt under the fingernails like crazy. And it's going to be a lot more work than a lot of folks are used to. But... I just feel like if you, I, I can't wait another 20 years in order to have this fight and let this opportunity go this time. Let me, let me say this. Right. I refuse to accept this rhetoric that this is an argument between fear and hope. I said it before, I said it again. I'm, I'm not scared. afraid. <laughs> what I am not is easily conned. 
And I am not easily calmed by people that are using the same arguments that we are against to try to convince people that this is their opportunity to change a state. If your argument was right, the Senate districts were allowed right now would look a lot different. The Senate districts right now that you're arguing for. I'm not uh, in the jury, for wait, those wait, Senate let me, districts. Let me, let me finish. I'm I gave you an opportunity. You agree that in 1967, the Constitution was clear we shouldn't be gerrymandering districts. Exactly. And yet we do it. So tell well, me no, how it changed. No, no, the delegates, we, the delegates. Right, adopted. right. but this is Under my a point. Republican this is government. my point. My point is, what makes you think that allowing the opening of the opportunity of changing the Constitution won't allow most delegates to do the very same thing? Now, I'll tell you what is at stake. I have over 750,000 retirees whose average pension runs $18,000 a year. Yeah. And we have a guarded system against Wall Street going into that system and pillaging and plundering the money of those retirees with fees. We have a system that guarantees that that pension will not be diminished. Absolutely. If you look at every state where that protection is not there, the movement has been in a, denif a, a defined benefit contribution is to reduce the cost of pension to the individuals. That's not fear. That's a fact. And so I'm not refusing, I'm refusing to take this rhetoric because I just refuse to be calm. Good, you were gonna... Um. So I find it fascinating that, that, that you say the selection of delegates based on state Senate districts in 2017 is gonna be different than the way Albany runs in 2017 because it was Democrats and Republicans worked together back in 1967 in the Constitutional Convention. I don't get it. You have to give me something better than that, than it was that way in 1967. So it's going to be like working across the aisle for the betterment, of, you know, for what's best for the, for the state in 2017. Is there any less indication of, of, of working across the aisle for good government policies out of Albany than what we have now? There is no way we can say 1967 is going to be repeated in 2017. But also, you referred to something that, 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 that gives me a lot of pause, Bill, which is you talked about batching some of the things. Batching? You, yeah. Oh, that happened batching in 67. Can't right. do in that. And it did you not happen in No, they it can do it. They could do it. They could. They could oh, do it. So you know what batching is? What the, in 67, there were a lot of good things in the delegates, but there were some bad things. And they put them in a batch, One and you big, had to vote yeah. up or down. And the... the Voters rebelled, and clearly, uh, if a new convention does have the power to do that, if they did that, I'd be surprised, but they could. Right, so what batching well, is me, like, in, in, what in, batching... But in, just, just a little historical, uh, in 1938, they broke up... They didn't batch. They, they broke up the proposals, mm -hmm. I understand, into, into nine separate proposals, and six were adopted, and three were turned down, and that's where you got the guarantee of collective bargaining. Right. And in 1967, the whole they election was right. focused, so, on, the, so, was focused so, on religious aid to schools, that's right. which was put into the Constitution, and you had to accept that's the right. whole thing. That's right. right. So, That's right. so what, the reason I'm saying this, you know, the thing that one of the things we all hate about uh, Albany is something called the big ugly, you know, which is like the big budget bill that has, you know, like it's like making it's it's worse than making soup or, you know, I mean, it's got everything in there. And like you don't get to, you know, you take there are poison pills and there's good stuff yeah. and there's bad stuff yep. and really stupid stuff. Yep. Right. And and so why is it that we think that batching is, you know, did, so it happened in 37 or it didn't happen in 37, it happened in 67. Why is 2017, 18, 19 going to be like the magic, like oh, anti-batching, anti the big ugly? It's the way Albany does business. There it's is the no definition magic. There's of no horse magic. There's no magic. There's no magic. But, but, There's so no I magic. just want to say, I want to say, look, you know, that the New York Civil Liberties Union, it does not favor the Democrats. We don't favor the Republicans. We are nonpartisan. We have no horse in the electoral race, okay? But we do have a horse in a fair system, you know, and, and, and giving everybody their due. And when you set up a situation 
where the state Senate districts that have been skewed to favor the incumbents who run the state Senate right, control the Constitutional Convention, I got to say, I'm not being, being, being motivated by fear. I'm just like making decisions based on like a heavy dose of reality. And we have to think of other ways to make change. And we're doing it every day. Let me go to, let me start taking some questions. Uh, tell us your name and your campus, please. Speak up. Yes, my name is Raj Tawala, and I'm from John Jay Com College of Criminal Justice. So my question is, there was a lot of talk about gerrymandering. But in terms of policy, how, how do we draw state lines in state lines in New York City that prevents gerrymandering from actually happening? Well, there is an independent commission. I don't know who wants. I mean, in, you know, in New York City, we have an independent commission that works pretty well. I mean, New York City's reforms work pretty well. The New York, it's less controlled. You can't take politics out of gerrymandering, but it's a lot less politics, and there's a lot more independent aspects of it. You know, the the question is, why would you think that? legislators on their own would uh, would accept changing <laughs> the system that gives them life they won't absent i mean they won't but why would you think that a constitutional convention is with a rig system is any different because right it it ha it happened in 67 under republican 67. control and i uh 67 well yeah 67, well, yes. Yeah, that was yeah, well, let me you finish. Pro choice Republicans, too. That's have, true. Have you ever met a pro true. choice Republican these days? Just check. Good point. Good point, okay. Donna. I got to concede. I got one. Uh, I'd like just to make a quick point before the next question. I'm pro labor. Here's the facts the current pensions are totally protected by the Constitution of the United States, Article 1, Section 10, Clause 1. There's no way. The contract clause has been held up by the Supreme Court. When you talk about Wisconsin, uh, Illinois, Rhode Island, uh, or Arizona, where pensions have been attacked, <coughs> they weren't contracts. They weren't in the Constitution. New York in 38 did an amazing job. I claim that if this passes, we need to get together with labor and strengthen collective bargaining. Mayor Bloomberg did not negotiate uh, in the city with the unions. He should have. We need to strengthen it. The authorities, and I'm for DBAs, uh, in our state are often either not doing pensions or 401ks. So assuming Henry and I make up after this, <laughs> I'm saying mm -hmm. that we need to strengthen uh, union pensions. But again, uh, this goes back to the risk, and do we have the delegates? But I'm just telling you where I you do optimists know that coming from. Pensions are prohibited subject of bargaining in New York, pursuant to the Taylor Law. Yes. So this rhetoric that the pensions are protected by an LRB, when we're talking about pensions for defined benefit contribution for public sector employees, doesn't apply. But how about so, authorities? No, Don't no, we want to cover them? Absolutely not. In fact, you have no protection in any contract that would allow you to preserve your pension. That's a fallacy. Because you're not allowed by state law to put your language into your collective bargaining agreements. The existing pensions, everyone says, are protected federally. If maybe you're right, but that, I'm not. Absolutely not. But the federalism right. defended the state and, and, the, and the federal government. You're talking about the, NL, the National Labor Relations No, Relation I'm talking about the Supreme Court of no. the United States has ruled but on the, this. Uh, Look, it's but, black and white. Well, black and white. Well, in, in, the, in, the, in the 1938 Constitution, mm -hmm. as I understand it, was, it, it's a contract. it protected against diminishing yes, pensions by contract. Of and cannot, by constitution. Cannot right. be arguably, thrown out by any arguably, constitution. That, that could be changed. No, future. You could amend that constitution. Future could be changed. Away Existing that, right. cannot be changed. So, no. You're absolutely right. You could, someone could. But here's the thing. I, they could do that, but if there's no one there to stand against that, it was right. surely no, I'm, you know, well, I'm just saying that a lot of the protections, as we were talking about, that do exist in New York State 
Sure. Yeah, would let's be real clear. We in, hold in the Constitution. Grabs. Existing pensions cannot be changed by a constitutional well, convention. It's a fallacy. Tell us your name and your and your. My name campus. is Razia Arabi. I am from Baruch College, and my question is: since um, we are hearing both sides of yes, opening the uh, conversation for constitutional convention, and no, um, would it be any way? Um, to see or foresee it that if um, everyone go for a yes, this is going to be a conventional constitu a constitutional convention to prevent it from going to places where we do not want it to go. Mm -hmm. um, no. Just, just no. a projection or there's a way for us yeah. to... No, there's no way. You can't. The delegates yeah, decide the rules. Yeah. The process is already the delegates set. delegates, they, not, they decide delegate. all the issues. They yeah. they make up the rules. They yeah. can have openness. They could have um, uh, they Close. could be meeting yeah. in, in in secret. Um, they could they could skew it any which way. They could yeah. they could vote to do batching or horse trading. They can order and, lunch, yeah. and that's why you mm -hmm. need to organize now to surface folks that can run to be a delegate if the vote is yes. The batching issue, by the way, I want you to focus on it because yeah, it's bad. if you do it as one bad, bad. big item, then uh, you're mm. much less likely to yeah. pass anything at the end of the process. Oh, yeah, so you're dead. If you break it up into bites, right. as happened in 1938, you're more likely to pass. That's right. just, a, just a procedure. That's right. Yes, ma'am. Name Hello. the campus, please. Um, my name is Sarah Franco. I attend Queens College. Um, my question is in, rega in regards to Mr. Samuel's statement about the final vote being of the people. Um, considering the fact that the general public is not like poly politically conscious of local politics, um, what do you think is actually going to happen in regards to the vote? Is this idea that the public will rally against corruption actually a reality? It's also the case that, that 2019 is the least turnout year yeah. of the entire political cycle, of the four-year cycle. You know, this right. year we have mayoral elections. 2018 and 2020, you have congressional, presidential. 2019, there will be nothing other than judges and this issue. So, I mean, uh, it, you know, it's a, it should be, it's the lowest be turnout deal. of the four years. And what happens when there's deal. a low turnout? Who controls the day historically? The political organizations, just saying. And right? I'm just the machines, saying, the I've machines. won more races with low turnout because we actually had a, 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 a an even playing field, and if you actually worked on the ground, as I have, to pull Let people me. out. So, so listen, you, I, I hear it. This could happen. That can happen. Don't go here. Don't go there. Back up here. This, I, I, I and, and I'm not negating everything that you're saying, and everything that you're saying is the reason why I want to fight for this convention, and everything that you're saying is the reason why you need to do the hard work to make sure that this convention actually is a decent convention. I think that's, and, and for, for every reason that you're talking I about. I think the hard work is really sort of fighting the battle to have a fair vote, fair electoral system, and that's not going to happen at this constitutional Including convention. changes. And I, I, I want to I I raise this is an important one point. issue. I mean, I think it's an important point. If anybody would come to me and say, let's organize to change the Constitution to fix uh, gerrymander, or let's organize... Fix to, the Board of Elections. Fix right. the Board of Elections, <laughs> yes. right. or to reform criminal justice reform. Let's organize labor, community, and do all the stuff. Let's do it. I'm with, I'm with it. What I don't understand is, why do you have to open everything through a constitutional convention to change the things that are bad? You, don't you understand? that when you do that, you're not just exposing the things you want to change, but you open in the things that they want to take away, the rights that you want to do. What makes you think that under this current system, we will be able to muster enough so that not just the good stuff happens, which is what I, I hear. We're only going to change yeah. the bad stuff, right? What makes you think we're going to be able to prevent the very, very bad stuff coming in that that could put thousands and thousands let of me, people at let risk. Let me answer uh, that. One, you're absolutely right. All of us would love to be able to limit this convention. Unfortunately, the Constitution doesn't allow us not to open it all, but I wish we didn't have to. But, okay. but the other thing that we have to go. forget, this is not two legislatures, an assembly and the state senate. We end up with a Yuma Car Carmel system. 
We have 15 delegates uh, statewide. We, the Democrats have never lost, I don't know, I think we lost one race in the last 20 years uh, uh, statewide. We have a registration, what, of two to one. So the odds of the right wing electing things is just not going to happen in New York. And if New York, compared to the other states, can't stand up to Trump and change uh, a discriminatory educational system, change a, uh, all the things without going into detail, who else can? So, but I, I do think we got to remember there's 15 at large. And uh, even uh, we control the convention in 67. We'll control it this time, but I also have a lot of confidence in, in a lot of my Republican friends that are for change, those elected you know, that we'll find. Go ahead. There's one, there's one issue we, that people haven't really talked about a whole lot, which is our guarantee of free, secular public education. You know, there's one issue that goes across the aisle, which right. is support for charter schools, <laughs> support right. for vouchers, the that's privatization right. of our our public education Absolutely. system. And that sucks, frankly, and that scares the hell out of yep. me. Because because I see the hedge funds, I see the charter school movement, yep. I see the people who see education as the new industry to make fortunes off of, who yep. cares about educating our children, as a re something that is really, really, really um, a possibility with the Constitution. Well, I have to tell you that. Well, 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 no, well, no, you're right. Well. And, 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 and we see that in New York State, in the legislature. Yep. We yep. saw it last year. We it. saw it the year before. The Catholic Church, the yeshivas all want money for religious education. You know, I believe in religious education when people choose it and pay for it themselves. That's not, that's not what you do with taxpayer money in a secular society where you have freedom of religion and no government sponsored religion. There's only religion. one line and in the that, Constitution. It says, says a sound, basic no, education. No, there's another one that says no. The Blaine Amendment says no taxpayer funding for, for religious uh, education. Yes. So, so we have that protection. And you know there is that protection is in the crosshairs. And there's a lot of money yes. behind attacking that and undermining that. And like, I'm worried. I am really, really worried about that. Uh, I think it's Good important. Uh, your points are all fine. But the, well, no, no. This is the education, changing the education amendment is my number one goal. It was written in 1894. We haven't touched it since, okay? In the same year that it was written, <coughs> segregated schools were voted legal by our legislature. And we had a governor named Pettibone Flowers. You ever heard of him? Based on that 1894 amendment, that's in the Constitution that must be changed. If you take the 630 school districts all across New York and you take the 100 in the wealthiest neighborhoods, you take the 100 in the lowest, that's 200 of the 16, the students in New York get in the lowest 100 under this flawed educational amendment, which is terrible, get $9,000 less per student the, of the 50 states under our education amendment, New York is number 49 in discrimination economically. Why NYSET doesn't do something about it is beyond me. So to per se, we're afraid the 1894 constitutional amendment will be changed is 180 okay, degrees Bill, let me let me try to get, we're only about five minutes mm -hmm. left. I want to try to get some more questions in. Hi, my name is Jordan. I go to the Macaulay Honors College at Brooklyn College. Um, so some of you mentioned that the current system in place favors the people already in power, the people with money to spend financing campaigns. So if the Constitutional Convention is not the way to solve this systemic problem, as you suggest, then what is? How can we realistically empower historically marginalized peoples to finally take control of their government if we're living in a so-called rigged system? Well, there's something called elections every, right. every, <laughs> every two years. And, 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 you know, I have to say this, because we have seen uh, people like the Koch brothers go state by state and literally buy elections, be willing to spend a billion dollars to move state legislative houses in one way or another. Now, I'm not usually saying... Usually in one way. <laughs> usually their way, right? <laughs> to benefit them and the 1% of the people in this society. And, and to think that New York is exempt from that, I, I think it's, it's naive, right? 
we, we have the influence of money now, and, and we will have the influence of money. I agree with Bertha that we need a people's movement, a movement that is going to reform the way the state has been doing business. Where I disagree with Bertha is that I don't think the Constitutional right. Convention is a vehicle to do that. Mm -hmm. we, we need criminal justice reform in the state. We need real comprehensive, uh, even, even the issue with, with DACA, uh, with the immigration yes. reform here, and the dream is we need to reform that. But to think that the, the, the Constitutional Convention would be the vehicle for that, I'm not convinced of that. I'm not afraid of it, but I am just not convinced because I have seen firsthand the system be subject to right. be bought by very influential, very powerful money interests that are, will do no less here in New York than they've done in Wisconsin and any other place. I agree. I Respect. absolutely agree. I'm, you know, I'm old enough. I'm not some wide-eyed, like, you know, oh, <laughs> boy, you know, we, let, let's, let's go to the barn and, you know, have unicorns. No. You know, my life is a life that's dirty and gritty every single day. So you're right. I don't see and I'm not looking for a magic bullet. There is no magic bullet. If you don't work every day, if you don't fight every day, and if you don't get at the things that they're doing, you lose. I understand that. But here's the thing. What I am not convinced about since I've been in this struggle now for 40 years, what I am not convinced about is that all of the other mechanisms that we have to change things can actually do what we want. I'm not, and I also don't like a zero-sum game where it's either either or. No one is saying that. My other thing is this, I don't trust the moneyed interest. I don't trust the other side. I think that they're bad. I've, I've seen it. And so for me, part of this convention is using this opportunity, not only to say, oh, let's have wonderful, nice things, but also to be there to fight against folks that we know want to take things from us. Ma'am, let me get a last question in. Hi, my name is Kiana Caesar. I'm from Baruch College. Um, I am extremely concerned about um, the role the Constitutional Convention will have on our environment. Are any are any of y'all concerned about the consequences, or like, um, are you concerned with what might happen if we're not taking adequate steps to protect our environment? Upstate? Well, in, in fact, the 1894 Convention established the Adirondacks Forever Wild. It's the most, you know, kind of radical, it's almost the first environmental <laughs> provision. And only, in, and in, only in, in the United States, right? And, and right, and so there's a constitutional protection, and there's a, and one of the discussions in, in connection with this was to add the Catskills to it. I mean, anybody, you know, anybody in about 20 seconds wanted to jump in on the uh, environmental protection. I went to the Quickly. environmental advocates who opposed the convention and drafted with them a basic right to clean air and fresh water. We submitted it to the assembly. I met with Carl Hasty. It passed, and it got stuck in the Senate. If it can get passed, any of these things, if they can get passed through Albany, God bless, I'm for it. Uh, there is no risk. I think we'll get the environmental uh, uh, amendment passed through the legislature. Uh, but if there's a constitutional convention, it, it will be passed too. But I think that's one that could go through the legislature. Wait, you Quickly. just said that the Clean Air Bill, like, Passed the assembly, right. got stuck in the Senate, and we want to have a constitutional no, convention I said, um, that, 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 that chooses people based what? on Senate. No, difference. I did I not say that. that. I Let said me, that's, 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 that's a good idea, I never missed and in line. good Excuse faith, me, I put it through. I did. No, I never missed yeah. that line. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay. What well, you said is not true. Thank Donna. you all. Make sure you vote in November. We're from Brooklyn, so vote early and often. Thank you very much. We'll see Thank you next time. Thank you.